My name is Gabriele Semino. I'm one of the students of the Technical University of Munich that are taking part in the competition as part of the Baha Hyperloop team. Today we are in California in the city of Hawthorne near the SpaceX tube that was built for this Hyperloop competition. There, uh, the amount of teams that actually initially uh, applied was, I believe, over 150, and now we've narrowed it down to about uh, to 25 who attended this uh, this competition. I believe from at least six or seven different countries, which is, which is spectacular. Um, and then today you're going to see three teams run in the tube. Uh, in the actual Hyperloop, and then Elon was very clear, the fastest pod wins. The way I found out about our loop was I am a frequent Redditor of the SpaceX subreddit, and so one day they were talking about the Hyperloop competition and that they needed some volunteers on the R-Loop team, and I've been on the team for about a year now. Working remotely and having a, a all virtu mostly virtual collaboration isn't without challenge. A lot of us make this our full-time job, even though it's not. What's special about our pod is that it is, as it stands, the only modular, scalable pod. This past week, we it was about 5 in the morning, and we had been going for since probably 5 in the morning the day before. A lot of us saw a second iteration of our R-Pod levitate for the first time. And that moment was immense, just to, uh, I, I, people were emotional, um, we were tired. I mean, it was history before our eyes. I mean, eight magnets were levitating that in midair. So it's, it was a pretty, it's something I'll never forget and I don't think anyone else on my team will ever forget either. I would say my favorite memory of this competition was really just seeing my teammates for the first time. So our pod is one of the biggest pods. It actually is the biggest pod of this competition. It's 18 feet long, uh, it weighs 1,800 pounds. It floats on an air bearing, an air cushion that was custom designed by our team. It has its own custom electronics. We kept our frame and shell from the previous competition, and we had to work with that. Yeah, expectations for this project ha have been immense. Uh, it's been almost two years for our team designing and building this. Every single student on this team is either a full-time student or a full-time employed intern. Um, nobody has taken time off from either and has basically done this on their spare time. And the fact that we pulled together the world's first ever air bearing pod at 60 miles an hour in just our second test on a full scale, uh, we're incredibly proud of that. We're hoping we're going to win this. We've had an excellent time and we keep hoping to see Hyperloops get developed around the world. Um, I think, you know, what, what this is really all about is advancing the state of transportation, trying new things that have never been done before that can uh, make an incredible difference to people's lives. Uh, get them to where they're going fast, safely, uh, lower cost, um, and really opening up the world. Go. Boy. Here. Through. Bye. Ice. Right, congratulations to the Swiss team completing successful uh, Hyperloop run. Well done, guys. FAR, which is actually the German name, is a student group from the Technical University of Munich. Our design is a design made for high speeds. The pod has its own propulsion on board, so we don't need to use the SpaceX pusher. It's an electric motor which, through a, a drive wheel, pushes, uh, which is pushed on the rail for high uh, power transmission, accelerates uh, the pod through the tube. Okay, so the first module we have here is a, a levitation model. So what we did at some point during the project this year is we decided to go without levitation. In principle, here, those, those are the magnets and that's all the lifting mechanisms for them. So what you can see here is the pod itself. Um, you can see the different subsystem on a completely carbon fiber structure. So our decision was to go without the pusher so to have our own propulsion. So what you can see in the back is the propulsion unit we sh uh, showed you before. That's actually what's 
accelerating the old part. So in here you can see the electric motor with the water cooling in here and you can see the cabling going in on the other side. The motor is connected to a drive wheel which sits behind this sensor and the idea here is to clamp the drive wheel onto the rail to transmit more power from the motor to the rail in order to accelerate the part. So these pneumatic muscles you see here actually press the whole uh, propulsion unit onto the rail to accelerate the part. What we can see when moving to the right here we have the inverter which is custom made for this uh, motor in particular. It's at the very bottom of that section. On the top we have all our electronic inside that uh, dark box with all the connectors, all the wiring coming out of it and that's a separate controller for ex exclusively for the motor. And then on the very top we have our antennas to communicate with the ground station and transmitting data about our position and our speed to SpaceX, which is what you will see during the, our run on the display. Uh, the batteries we are using are lithium polymer batteries, and lithium polymer batteries unfortunately cannot be used in vacuum, which is where we will be traveling when moving into the tube. So what we had to do is we had to build a box around the batteries that that we can keep at one bar, which is atmospheric pressure, even if outside the pressure is near to vacuum. So that's actually a quite massive part for just the batteries, but that's needed in order for our batteries not to explode during our run. And then going to, finally to the left, that's all the pneumatic system. So that is, the, is our pressure vessel, with, uh, which contains all the pressurized air we need for a run. And here you see all the pneumatic stuff that is controlling the brakes which are pneumatic, it's controlling the pressure inside the battery box in case we lose pressure we can repressurize the box uh, using the pneumatic system and it's also controlling the pneumatic muscle as explained before in the back that actually uh, pu pull our um, propulsion unit down in order to accelerate faster. And at the very front we also have a very nice 3D printed seat just to show what the Hyperloop is actually for which is transporting people. We hope to win the competition, we still need, need, have to run and show how fast we can go with this part. But obviously we hope to win after several months of working on this part. We think we can go faster than all the other parts can do. Again, congratulations to SwissDiv on a successful run. They are working on retrieving their pod now and Laura is gearing up to get their pod on the track. Two, one, launch. And congratulations to the war team. That was an amazing job. That, uh, that, that, that pod just went uh, 324 kilometers an hour, over 200 miles an hour. So well done, guys. You need these things. There's, there's a lot of problems in the world, um, but if we don't have things that inspire us, what's the point of living? And that's what this is all about. So congratulations. Congratulations to all the teams, and congratulations to the war of the winner.